Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to session two of uh, our Aconite Paint Along for Descent Legends of the Dark. Welcome and hello. Uh, I have with me a Robbie. Yay! We are with David at the moment. I'm sure he'll be along soon. Robbie, whilst you're here, do you want to introduce yourself again? Let people know who you are. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, so I am a sci-fi fantasy author. Um, I do novels, among other things, for Aconite and currently for their uh, Descent range of books, backing up uh, all this lovely new stuff that we have on display here, recently released by FFG. So um, yeah, that's me. Excellent. And I, if you don't know or can't remember, I'm actually marketing and publicity manager for Aconite Books, also miniatures painter. So I was very excited to, that FFG allowed me to do this mad thing I decided because I just wanted to paint the miniatures um, from the Descent game. And yes, they very kindly sent us along some miniatures uh, and we've put them into little sessions to try and teach certain techniques and skills that uh, you might want to try out yourselves on your miniatures. Um, and we've set them into groups based on some short stories that Robbie has also written up for FFG. Um, you can read the first two uh, on the FFG website here. Let me paste that in. Hello, Stormy. Hello. Hi, welcome. Nice to see you. Um, but yes, you can read the first two, which were the ones that we painted last week. Um, and then hopefully the ones that we're painting today, their stories will be on the FFG website very, very soon. You can find out more about the game there as well. And if you want to know more about the Descent novels, you can find them here. Um, so please do go along and if you have any questions whilst we're painting, please do put them in the chat. Uh, we're very happy to talk about painting stuff. We're very happy to talk about the books. Um, we don't know much about the game at play itself. So um, I, I was hoping my copy would be delivered today, but uh, it was not. Um, so yeah, can't tell you about the game uh, apart from it looks amazing. Um, and the miniatures are beautiful, so I mean, what more do you need, really? But yeah, if you have any questions for us, please do feel free to put them in the comments and we will, uh, yeah, we will answer them if we can. So today we are looking at object source lighting. Robbie, do you have any experience with the object source lighting at all? Uh, absolutely not, no. I'm going into this with no knowledge whatsoever, apart from I know it is, but uh, beyond that, no, it uh, sounds even more terrifying than non-metallic metals. So, yeah. <laughs> and it is. Uh, <laughs> Good correct. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah. So, object source lighting for anyone who's like, "What the hell is that?" It's when you have uh, the glow of a fire or a lantern or a bit of magic, and you don't just have sort of the glow on the th the thing that is creating the glow but it, you also see those refre reflections of light on the person holding said torch or magic thing. Uh, so we're gonna have a look at doing that today. So we're looking at two different types of magic effect. One will be on, um, is it, it Varex, isn't it? That's yeah. And uh, yeah, they look really cool. We're gonna do some magic on their staff here. So we might get a little bit of reflection on the hand, which is why we painted up the hand as well and the arm. But yes, mainly we're going to focus on these little bits of their staff. Uh, and Robbie's then going to tell us a little bit about them, seeing as he wrote a backstory for them. Um, and this is Cyrus. Is it Cyrus, yes. Um, and he, I'm going to, we're going to do these like a flamey, magic-y, cool, looking thing and then i'm going to show you how to do some uh, osl on the cloth now normally when you do like osl you would paint the whole figure and then do the osl but because i'm just showing you sort of the technique we're just gonna do it on the cloth bits and then you can go away and paint the rest of it and use the same 
thing to do the rest. But yeah. So yeah, this has just been painted up very, very quickly. His his cloth, uh, his robes, I just painted up um, with a bit of contrast and a cheeky dry brush. Nothing too uh, labor intensive because I also forgot that I'd given everyone homework until today. That's, uh, <laughs> I feel like that should be a Twitter bio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of contrast and cheeky dry brush. <laughs> oh, I, I can't take uh, credit for it. I would get told off by the person <laughs> <laughs> who always uh, says that's how he paints. Oh, he would be upset that I had uh, made his whole technique famous for. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to start off um, with uh, Verix here. Uh, what can you tell us about Verix? Um, so Variks is a dragon hybrid. Um, they are kind of caught up in the issues engulfing both dragons and dragon hybrids uh, in Terranoth as of the start of the game. Um, they're kind of viewed as a bit of a prophet and a rebel, and they're not entirely sure how comfortable they are with that particular tag. Uh, so they're kind of working through some stuff. Um, yeah. I've just seen David as appeared. Hey. Hello. Encounter wild David. <laughs> Hello, there we go. More or less in that case. I one. I've just seen your message as well, David. That is fine. <laughs> Thank you for coming along. That's all right. Uh, so where are we? It's going to be Robbie. So we just started, started, so don't worry. We were just saying that we're going to start by doing uh, object source lighting on this one, sort of the smaller area to start with, and then we'll move on to bigger things. <laughs> so you should all have your staff painted up however you wished. I didn't specify a colour. I mean, if, have you got the Tesseract glow, everyone? Something uh, like it. I don't, but I have something like it. Excellent, that's all you need. Something like it. <laughs> what have you got that's like it, Robbie? Because I don't have any. <laughs> um, I'm currently deploying different shades of blue. Okay. Okay, well, if no one's got it, I'm not going to use it either. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> so you've got, you're doing sort of blue colours for it. Okay. So blue, like, huh? like a light blue? Yep. Sweet. Okay, so going to use a light blue then and we're going to make a glaze Woo! hopefully you've all got some clean water in you. okay yeah got that do have that yes Get my professionals to the end <laughs> so with object source lighting uh less is more you want very very thin layers and you want to build it up slowly because if you go in with a really thick paint all you're going to do is ruin the thing that you've already painted and that will make you sad <laughs> so to make a glaze you need a little bit i'll move this over here for a second you need just a little bit of paint so there's my little bit of blue and then you just want to add a little bit of, at a time of some water. Then, <laughs> the glaze is sort of thicker than a wash, um, but it's still quite thin. And you want that sort of consistency. So when you pull it, but you've still got a fair amount of colour. And uh, Stormy is also painting some OSL. I believe he's painting some uh, eyes uh, for someone I've forgotten who, which model. But he's using some old, is that kind of in blue? I can never pronounce these made up. A wonderful, um, a wonderful combination of ultramarine colours because I'm using Calgar blue and Macrag blue. So oh. I've got uh, Baharoth blue here. So 
or Elsie. And I'm choosing blue. Because <laughs> mine's <laughs> just a number. <laughs> Right. Okay. So once you've got that consistency, you want to load it up onto the tip of your brush only. You don't want to coat your whole brush in it. And just going to apply it very lightly to the spiky bits and just around the inner ring bit there it's going to be very light and you're going to be like oh, I can't really see it that's fine we're building it up and you want to do the same on the other side Oh, bloody night vampires. Oh, very nice. He's doing his painting some vampires. <laughs> oh, my copy of Redacted City arrives tomorrow. The, uh, the game that never was. <laughs> I'm uh, excited to paint more vampires. <laughs> okay, so. And all you're going to do, because they're thin coats, they'll dry quite quickly. You're just going to start building it up again. More and more and more. What you want to start doing once you've got a few layers on, you want the brightest bit, so the, the sort of the most amount of paint in these centre bits, because you have to think like the light's coming from the middle and it's shining out, so it's going to get less bright the further out you go. You just keep doing that, waiting for it to dry a little bit. This is where when I was on my own, I would be um, using a hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> I might have done that earlier. Yeah. I have like a hairdryer that is just for miniatures. <laughs> a hairdryer and the one I leave in my craft room for painting miniatures. <laughs> A miniature hairdryer. Yeah. Tiny hairdryer. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Like a miniature size hairdryer. Yeah, I got like a travel one. Yeah, so it's it's a miniature hairdryer for miniatures. <laughs> so if I like the third go round, you should see that the colour is starting to build up a bit now If you put too much paint on and it starts to pull, um, just wash the brush quickly and dry it and then just use the brush like a sponge to soak up any areas that are sort of oversaturated with paint. That's also a tip if you use contrast paints. 
going to get cray cray. So David as well, sorry, because uh, you're coming late. Uh, yeah, but introduce yourself properly. Tell people who you are. Who are you, David? Um, Why are you so on my I, screen? <laughs> uh, my name's David Grimer, as my little name tag there says. Uh, I'm, I'm here because I wrote the Descent novel. Which I can't remember the name of that. Creel of Tacan, that was the one. <laughs> um, and I've written sort of some other novels as well. But uh, that's my one that got me this gig. <laughs> also, because I saw that you'd started painting during lockdown and was like, ah, oh, I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yes, I did an underworld war band, didn't I? That's where I started with. And a Necromunda gang, I think. Yes. Not that I ever got to play with them. I did at least get a game of. <laughs> Um, uh, shades by him, but uh, no necromunda for me. Yeah, I, I, I'm still painting my necromunda. I've not played either. I got them for my birthday last year. I've not finished painting them either. I changed my mind now, anyway. I painted a whole gang of fan stars and then decided I want to be our bike instead. Quite right. <laughs> I am, of course, Escher Girls. And you only have one choice. <laughs> you take it. <laughs> Once you can start seeing the glow, oh sorry, is that the thing? Once you can start seeing the glow, start moving up the staff and onto the hands again, very lightly. The idea is that you still want to see some of the colour underneath, but you also want to see that it's going up. And it will get lighter the further away it gets, so you don't want too much. And when you're happy with the amount, you get a bit of white paint. You can start adding a little detail. Not liking to focus on this star. Focus on this star. There we go. Hmm. So I'm just going to add just at the ends of these sort of flamey looking bits. Like that. Come on, camera. Mm. It likes my hand too much. Okay, it's refusing to. But just, just the tips of those. Nothing else. I did forget to show off was the uh, what the models actually look like. It's nice, pretty rendered things. So this is who we're painting at the moment. Very painting there. Stop, and then we're going to move on uh, to Cyrus here. It's also very cool. I'm going to mix a little bit of the white into the blue now as well and just do a little bit more of a glaze. So 
a little bit wider just there the tips there Apologize to anyone who listens and is like, what's that bird noise coming from? Yeah, that is. Terrible fear is being a bit of a madam at the moment. So how, how have you both been? It's been two weeks. What have you been up to? Work, I guess. Writing. <laughs> <laughs> Writing stories, pretty much pretty much it for me. Yep, I uh, I started on a new novel. So that's uh, always a good thing, I guess. Um, <laughs> just trying to keep the momentum going for that, really. Yes, How that do you do that? more fun than the, the other parts. How, how do I work? How do you go about keeping sort of momentum and things going? Uh, generally, I find that I get angry at myself if I don't hit my word count. Okay. So basically, my motivation is uh, telling myself off internally <laughs> until I get it done every day. Um, yeah, it's going pretty well. I'm managing 2,000 words a day, which is really easy for me. Um, I think normally I try 1,500, but there's some sort of psychological game involved whereby if I tell myself that I have to do 2,000, then I normally manage 2,000. If I told myself I had to do 1,000, I just about manage 1,000. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's a weird sort of like mindset cheat your brain basically yeah exactly um, <laughs> don't know why that is but at the moment i'm just telling myself i have to do 2000 and that'll be fine so i'll see how long that maintains for <laughs> i wish that worked for me i manage about one to 1.5 to 2000 a day and I don't think it mattered what I told myself. If I told myself I needed 2,000 or whatever, I'd still do one and a half to 2,000 a day. That just seems yeah. to be as much as I can do. Yeah, the last novel I was only doing 1,000 a day, um, which was okay, but obviously it's a bit of a catch-22. You either do less work every day but then work more days or a lot of work in less days. So I kind of don't really find one any easier than the other. But... Well, I mean, a thousand words a day is easier, but it's a bit sort of soul destroying if it's taking three or four months to to get the first draft finished. Yeah. Um, so hoping that. And at that point, Lottie and Gren are pulling their hair out and. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. It's, uh, it's pushing the deadline close. Whereas the idea with this is if I uh, get this done quickly, then I'll have loads of time to uh, do the sprucing up and the finishing touches. Yes. We'll see if that actually works out. <laughs> also, can I just say that my um, glass full of water for paint looks like a lovely milkshake? Mm. It is not. So drink it by accident. If you see me at any point about to drink, <laughs> please. No, it's not milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Did you uh, see the news that all the milkshake has run out? Of I did. I was about to mention it's. Could sell it to McDonald's. <laughs> I've got your milkshake for you. I'm I'm very sad. I I like their Nana milkshake a lot. <laughs> That's like oh, not that I've had one for like the whole of lockdown. So I don't know what I'm <laughs> in because it's been 18 months since I had my last one. So I'm, I'm probably okay, but still, yeah, crazy.
how's everyone's looking? Uh, it's going on. I think it's it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> I'll hold it up in a sec, but I doubt my camera will uh, yeah. it with any detail. Stormy says, do not drink it. Also, move your mug of tea away from your water pot. You're either going to get a paintbrush in your tea or a mouthful of yuck. Right. <laughs> yeah, I've deliberately not got any other sort of mugs or cups here. So. Yeah, I keep, I keep my drinking cup on my left, <laughs> my working cup on my right because I'm right handed so I just go dunk. If my drink's on the right then I would definitely dunk my paintbrush in my drink. I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to the blue with just a little bit of a blue wash. Um, just for a little bit of depth in there. Yeah, yeah I have a blue wash. That's good. It's not a necessary step, but it just helps the bits to stand out. I really wish my camera would focus. It's being very annoying. Mm Bird seems to have quietened down now. Oh. Yeah, hopefully, Sadie's just done a barker and said, Shut up. <laughs> Sister, you're so annoying. Silly pup. We yesterday swallowed a stone. Oh. Yeah. 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 Spend six hundred pounds to have it removed. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was not super happy with her for that. I don't know if you can see the the sort of the the lighter blue that's going on on the arm there as well on the hand. Very thin through where I've built it up here. It's still very thin there, but you can still see the colour of the cloth and the hand underneath. As well as being good for like OSL, glazes are good for um, helping things. But so when you're doing skin, you want to do like tattoos or something on the skin, putting a glaze over the top of it helps it to um, sort of look more settled in the skin. You do like a skin colour glaze that goes over the top of it. It doesn't look so drawn on. It looks a bit more mm. natural. You can see those patterns on this. So I put a, a glaze over the top of those gold bits so that. Ooh, beautiful. Pretty. Yeah, and her dress has got peacock feathers. Amazing. Which is my vampires. Ah, ah, ah. She's cool. Right. I'm going to leave that one for the moment because sometimes you need to step away from OSL. Um, before you ruin it and then come back to it at a later date. How are you both getting on? Yeah, I think I'm kind of. Yeah, I'm get it. I'll see if it. We're not going to. Uh, no, you can. No. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> That it is a staff. I cannot see what colour yeah. it is. 
Trust me, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually doing the homework for the next one. Ah. <laughs> oh, <I'm prepared. laughs> it's okay, I did mine in my lunch break as well. And I'm, and I'm late, so uh, catch up. <laughs> it's okay. We will allow it. I'll let David catch up with us in before we get started on the next bit. No, it's all right. I've got enough. I've done all the magic effects. I'm just doing his uh, his robes. Right. Okay. So I'm thinking of doing this one all flamey because it looks like a phoenix. I think. Yeah. What do you, what do you do? robes? Because he looks like a fire wizard, doesn't he? Yeah, I went with like ready maroony coloured ones. Robbie, what do you know about old Cyrus then? Uh, Cyrus was a student at the uh, University of Greyhaven where they teach magic. Um, but he got into a bit of a pickle with one of his uh, teachers because said teacher was trying to drain the magical energy of a phoenix called <gasps> Indra. That's <gasps> why. Uh, Indeed. So, needless to say, he intervened heroically, saved the phoenix, and now the phoenix, Indris, is uh, kind of his buddy there, linked uh, mentally. And I think, well, yeah, that's the phoenix that we're, I assume, about to paint. It's pretty cool. It was like, you, can't have, you can't have his soul, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I'm going to start by doing an under a coat of uh, yellow. Nice, bright. So hopefully you've primed the phoenix and the fires prior, so it's nice and white and bright. Because yellow is a bugger. I have, but I somehow can't find my yellow, so I'm going to do <laughs> red, I guess. Orange. Yeah, have you got an orange? Um, not go with red. How do you make orange? <laughs> <laughs> you need yellow, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go with red then. It'll be an adventure. Yeah. We're all, we're all learning here. I could just do the pink blue as well. <laughs> you could just do it blue as well. Yeah, we'll use the same. Yeah, I'll probably just do that. So I would add some, so go with light blues to dark blues. So if you haven't got like multiples of blue, just add some white in. So go with the lightest color first. Right. So yellow. Yellow slash very light blue. Is this a light, light yellow or like a base yellow? Uh, so I've got a pure yellow, so it's not a pastel colour. Okay. I'm just going to change my water because it's lovely. Uh, mm. <laughs> mm. shaky. anyone who's like yellow is a bugger to paint i hate painting yellow i will say this stuff is like magic because that's 
That's one coat. And it's that is a good strong yellow. Yeah. I guarantee it mine will not look like that, right? It's instant paint alpha series are oh, very nice. How much uh how much they cost again? Instant paint ones. I yeah. think they're like one pound sixty-five a bottle. Oh, nice. So you can buy them in different sizes. Okay. So, uh, so this is like whatever this is the two hundred, oh, 20 mil, no ten mil. This one is. Right. Um, but ones that I use a lot, like the white and the black, are having fifty mil. So there. Okay. Much bigger, and you can get sample size ones as well, which are like 0.25 mil they're like little diddy things so if you're not sure if a color is going to be the right one for you you can just buy like little cheap sample bottles uk company ian who runs it is very lovely <laughs> hi ian <laughs> What is the, um, the third week we're doing? It's skin, isn't it? But what is it? Uh, yes, skin, hair, and fur. So we're going to be looking at uh, the little dwarf. Oh, I forget the name of already. Uh, um, and the little cat. Oh, Charles. Oh, so cute. So, yeah, we're going to be doing the fur on chance and then skin and hair on Ooh, um. oh, right gotta wait for that bit to dry a little bit oh. and then We'll go on to our middle, which will be an orange or few, a mid, a mid blue. Orange. I've only got like a mega bright orange. Did that do the. Yeah. That is glorious. What is that? I've got Troll that one. Orange. What orange? Troll, Troll Slayer orange. Oh, Troll Slayer. Lovely. Should have guessed. Yeah, this is a nice one. Not sure what I got it for. I'm pretty sure I've never used it. It's going to be a virgin popping, I think. You mean you don't have every single Gotrich minute? <laughs> I always thought about, you know, making sure I had the minute of every character I ever wrote about, but I quickly yeah. decided. Not that every point it was Thor <laughs> Grimm or something. I was like, no, he's too expensive. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've all been through that. Through that. <laughs> My Phoenix looks like a mint imperial. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. Rising like a mint imperial from the flame. <laughs> <laughs> nom nom. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm not going to bother with the top because my white's still wet. So. <laughs> 
We'll just do the main flamey part in the, in the middle. Yeah. So, sorry, we're moving on to a darker... Yes, slightly darker um, colour. And just slapping that on. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Robbie. No. <laughs> when do we ever just slap a colour on? <laughs> right. I'm going to use the same orange that you're using, David. So we want to make it a little bit thinner. So it's more of a, again, a glaze consistency. So I need your paints to dry so fast. <laughs> my, my yellow is still. It's really hot in this room. All right. So I've got like six lights on me. Sure business. Okay, it's still dripping. Oh, this. All the other paints I've used so far have been slightly clotted and they're definitely on the way out because orange is so beautiful and smooth. Oh, yeah. It's fantastic. I hate it when paints dry up. The way so you're going to just start applying it to the sort of upper layers. If it's quite thin, it will seep down a little bit. And you're, as long as you can still see some of the yellow. And this orange is also what we're going to start building the um, the OSL on. Don't forget, chat, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. my glaze a bit too thin there is it all so i can't see it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so, too thin if you can't actually see the color over the yellow then <laughs> it's an invisible paint layer that'll be the next thing. Fine, uh, it's Hmm. Ooh, I hear a cat. Yeah, a regular <laughs> learning visitors will, will recognize it's now Porthos and Tupac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come paint with us. <laughs> Always bring the pets on, you're sure to go viral. That's the rules. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you can see her, in, see her in the background there. Yeah. <laughs> Stormy says, David and Robbie, as we are painting miniatures, do you have a favourite miniature you've worked on? And was it book related? Uh, well, no, not book related. And I tend to be a very, I'm quite impatient, a painter. I don't really sort of do sort of centerpiece kind of models. I just want to get them good enough to to stand on a board or a table. So uh, something easy <laughs> would be my favourite. Yeah, I um, I don't think I've actually ever painted a model that's like a direct character in one of my books. I'm telling a lie, but. Um, I do get given a lot of models that are characters in my books. Well, I have like some. Um, one, one time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm slowly trying to collect the Karkaradan army by people giving me Karkaradan. So uh, it could take a while, but uh, I've got about a dozen, two dozen. So, um, but yeah, I think um, I've been doing a Heather Knights of Slanish army for about a year now. Which I quite enjoyed. Um, I did the, the Keeper of Secrets, which I think I showed last time. Yes, um, I like that. It's pretty cool. I spent ages trying to find a specific head because I wanted to kit bash it. I wanted Ooh. to give it a different head, and uh, eventually I was uh, able to track down someone who was like, "Yeah, you can have this unrelated head." 
Uh, it's a big bullhead from the um, Lumines. Uh, mm. So, yeah, that was fun to paint, definitely. I guess it was better when you, uh, you know, made it yourself almost. It's got that extra satisfaction. Mm. Yeah, I haven't done a lot of kit bashing. Uh, mainly because I'm always just afraid I'm going to ruin two models instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love kit bashing. I always wanted to create for the, like a completely kit bashed army. But that's one of those, you know, projects that Probably never get around to. Yeah. I, I did actually little troll. I gave it two heads. So a trog off. Had a big head and a tiny little goblin's head. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I once saw someone who had uh, kit back the whole sort of Rough Riders Warhammer 40,000 army that looked pretty amazing. But like Rough Riders, but with Cadian bodies. Oh. Hold on a second. I'm being called by my daughter. So I, <laughs> I knew she couldn't leave me. Hold on. Yeah, no, so. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm leaving sort of the inner part of the wings. Uh, yellow for the moment. I haven't decided what I'm doing with them. Sorry, guys, I have to go now. Oh, okay. I have, to, I have to make a tea for a child. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, and probably the cat. <laughs> That's fair. That I'll show nice. you what I've got so far. Yes. Not takes two turns. Oh, no, that's good. Nice. Very it's nice. a bit blurry, of course, with the picture quality, but I think it looks all right. Yeah. So, your homework is to watch the rest of the video and finish it. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. Yep. See you later. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I think I have now applied the darker shade. Excellent. So you still should be able to see some of the lighter shade. Yep. Sort of building it up. So now what you're going to start doing with that slightly darker shade is start apply it to the cloth and ah. to start with you want to just focus on the areas that are risen okay so the tops of the folds of the trousers and again really thin this is where it starts to get scary again yeah it's a little too thin And what I normally do when I'm working on uh, clothes to try and do the uh, OSL is I take a photo of it uh, with a light source in the direction that it's going, and then I turn it to black and white, and then I can see oh, that's the bright colours where it's meant to go. That is clever. But I'm not going to faff around with doing that here. I'm just going to use my eyeballs and hope for the best. <laughs> the classic painter technique. Yeah. So I'm going to put like a little bit on this knee over here, but not much because this okay. bit of flame is going to uh, okay. show some light, but not it's, it's much further away than it is to this side of the leg. Yeah, and if you don't get it thin enough here, mm -hmm. that's where you sort of ruin your lovely paint job. <laughs> like, oh, that's hard work and I've messed it up. That's my fear. 
But sometimes you just got to go for it. Yes. And the good job, the good thing about putting it on lightly is that you can then build up to mm -hmm. something a bit stronger if you want to. So yeah, I do it like, you know, quite a bit stronger on the areas where like the flame is closest. Right, yeah. And then, so I put like one layer over all the bits that will have some color to them uh -huh. and then go back and only add it to the bits closest for the second layer and then build it up that way. So like the top of his head should be pretty glowy. I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow from the first layer just to bring up some highlights and um, what you would do is if you were painting this you know properly you paint everything first and then go on and do the OSL so yeah. you add some to his face so like most of that half, second half of his face would have RSL on it, backs of the arms, sort of there'd be a reflection on the um, staff as well. Well, I've just seen there are four lights. Yes, I have four lights here. I have um, one in front of me here, one to the side of me here, one down here, and then one here as well. Four, I'm I'm the overhead light, so actually there are five lights. Five lights. I have one very thin one. Yeah. Which one is the better? <laughs> yeah, it's... My room is ridiculous with the amount of lights <laughs> floating around. It's like, yep, yeah. all of the lights. All of Your uh, electricity bill must be scary. Uh, yeah, I mean, luckily, I don't get to paint that often. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's not it's not great. <laughs> if you were living up here, you would be tempted in winter to turn the lights on as a source of heat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, in the winter, I'm very stingy with my heat. I just put on like six jumpers and just walk around like the Michelin man. Yeah. <laughs> much the same holdover from uh, the good old student days. Exactly. Right, so you should be able to see that sort of building up. Right, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. I'm kind of happy with my one. Kind of. OSL is, it is something that does take a little while to, um, like, you, you do need to practice with it to get it the right. way you want it. Like, I'm still, like, definitely need more practice with it. But I'm slowly getting the, the hang of it. And it does take patience. You do have to be, like, very thin coat, let it dry. Yeah. Very thin. 
and the guts to actually do it in the first place and risk yeah. your lovely model. Yes. Yeah, the first time I tried it, I did, yeah, just ruin everything completely. I was like, oh, <laughs> now I've just got to paint over this whole thing and start again, which is soul destroying. But the, the Tesseract Glow is really good because this, I don't know what it is about it. It's really thin, uh, it's really bright. So okay. even if you put it on black, you'll get that glow straight away. And then you, yeah, the more layers you add, the brighter the glow is. So even on black, it's like crazy good. Ah, Danielle. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Danielle is part of our, uh, our Asmode Entertainment US team. Yay, it's nice to see you in the chat. Thanks for coming along. I'm just adding like a like a sort of a red now, so you could go with like just mm -hmm. the straight up blue for yours. Just add in like some just to like the ends and the very top parts. Right. So keeping it mostly orange and yellow, but then I'm using uh, contrast for this bit just because contrast works quite well for things like OSL and for flames and things. I never use contrast for their actual like intended <laughs> purpose. I do like them for more technical stuff. Are you looking forward to getting stuck into the full big descent box when it arrives then? I am. Um, though I'd, I'd be one of those people, I'd probably have it and then like not play it for months and months and months. Yeah. Uh, mainly because I've still got Gloomhaven that I haven't played, which I bought just before lockdown hit. You think that that would be a perfect time to play that, but we just haven't got around to it. Yeah. But I think because this also has an app, so you've got yeah, yeah. you can sort of play it on your own yeah and the app does the hard work for you which is what i'm excited yeah. about that's a pretty cool innovation that yes i like that they've done that because they did that for like mansions of madness as well okay. and uh the lord of the rings journeys in middle earth okay and it just took a little bit of like the the stress away from someone and everyone can play at the table right yeah without, without it being someone that's like in control of this particular bit yeah yeah i need to download the app <gasps> ready for tomorrow could have a run through after work tomorrow that'd be good yeah i wasn't sure if i was going to get one because with work like sales uh -huh. like staff sales were always like the last on the list uh -huh. so if it had sold out uh -huh. and they'd have a lot of people ordering it then staff sales get like cancelled i was like no i really love this i mean my 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 purse will thank thank you for cancelling it, but I won't. Uh. I suppose we'll have to get some author copies as well for you and David so you, you know the new lay of the land. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to say no.
part was like, oh man, I wish I could write stuff. People send me free things. <laughs> but I can't write. <laughs> so just have to yeah. put up paying for it. You got to do what you can, I guess. Yeah. I always feel like I'm the only one in the office who isn't like a writer. <laughs> so it's like, oh no. And I'm in charge of doing the words on the newsletters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably a good thing, right? It would uh, yeah. all get a bit, a bit too much if everyone was a writer. Yeah. I'm busy beavering away at my uh, next descent novel, which I assume I'm allowed to mention. Yes. It's been revealed. Yeah, so, tell us a little bit more about it, because obviously we've only mentioned it sort of briefly in our uh, on our blog. Uh, so yeah, it is called Zachareth, and believe it or not, it's about Baron Zachareth, uh, the descent villain, or is he a villain? <gasps> it's, a, it's a gray area. So um, yeah, it's not all focused on him, uh, kind of his like origin story, bad guy origin story, which is uh, pretty cool to get to know. Um, so yeah, just working away at that. Started last week and so far so good. Like I said, just trying to keep the momentum up. And it's gonna that's gonna be a new strand for us, isn't it? It's not it's sort of looking at yeah, I didn't know what to say about that, but yeah, it's kind of like a sub like a sub series. Um if you've got the main descent novels, then it's it's hopefully looking at uh various different villains and and they're gonna be I mean, so like when we've got the other books, like you do sometimes have some, you, you know, you've always had some of the characters from the second edition in those. And like, yeah. so this will be the same sort of thing. There'll be villains and people that fans already will recognize and will know a little bit about. In this yeah, case. yeah, exactly. It's um, it's kind of just trying to like expand on the, uh, the established cast. Um, Which is Q. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, I have to go into that Legends of the Facebook group and then just spam them about that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hey, everyone. I mean, my, uh, <laughs> my second descent novel is out for uh, October, November, I think. Uh, yeah, where it was. yeah, I think it's October. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, release dates, that means spamming time. Yep. And I'll, I'll spam it beforehand to be like, hey, pre-order it. Yay, it's the best. Always appreciate it. Yeah, the, the journey group are pretty good. They let me uh, spam them with like these events and stuff. Yeah, they seem pretty good. Well, there was like one comment and it was just like an angry face. And I was like, why are you angry? <laughs> <laughs> angry. <laughs> What, are you mad that we're painting them? That you don't have your shit? I don't, I don't understand. Why, why, why are you so mad? Or is someone who's angry? Yeah. I'm adding just a little bit of black. Right. Very, very, very tips. I don't know if this will work for the blue. You maybe want to do like a uh, if you've got like an even darker blue. Yeah, I might just mix it with some black and yeah, it's literally just the very tips. Yeah, some edge. Highlighting. We're not using um, washes or anything. So I'm well, I'm using a contrast. So if you yeah have a black wash or a black contrast, then yeah, I've got a, a shade. Throw a little bit in there. One thing I do have to do is finish like all the rest of the bits of the model that we didn't paint last week. Yeah. Like, so, like bits painted. Like, oh. Yeah, I need to finish off my brim. 
didn't actually beat any Galazzo in his snow sometime. Yeah. Like, well, at least when I start the game, I will at least have the the heroes painted up. Yeah, exactly. Looking forward to getting on to the, um, all the other stuff. Oh, there's so many cool yeah. like, Addy models. All the models, oh, all the monsters are just, yeah, they're very cool. Yeah, maybe we can yeah do some of the monsters maybe. In September, I we'll work out yeah. some dates. Yeah, because it's our boy. It's, it's the it's the Aconite birthday in September. Yay! Yeah. Is well, that, that two years? It'll be one year. Our first what? year of publishing. That's crazy. It yeah. feels like how, how have you managed to publish that many books? <laughs> I know. We've just crazy. got very talented authors and very talented amazing publishing team. I think. Yes, yeah, sweet. We're pretty good as well, I suppose. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it's only yeah, only been a year. Only been a year. Yeah, and we're uh, we're having a party at the Dice Cup in Nottingham. So, if anyone is around in Nottingham, you are welcome to come along to our party. Which is uh, on our Facebook group. So do pop along and. Find out more information about it. It's a free event, obviously. It's pie. You can just come hang out with us. Basic things. Got an ABBA song stuck in my head for some reason. What's stuck in your head? Got an ABBA song. Oh, nice. Just firmly lodged. <laughs> Been going on since I started painting. Speaking of, I have actually been uh, using the uh, new Descent soundtrack. Oh, yes. My writing, which I did not realize was a thing until a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh, they've actually done a whole like soundtrack to go with the game, which is amazing. Yeah, I think that, yeah, they released that like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I remember seeing it, or maybe last week or something on on Twitter's. Yeah, it's very cool. I don't uh, normally write with stuff like music on because I just can't concentrate. Some people it helps, some people it hinders. Um, yeah. Sadly, I'm the latter, but uh, I've been having that on because it's pretty atmospheric. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. I can't work with like music on. Like when I'm working from home, I'm just like in the living room, just working. Yeah. I don't like that distraction, but everyone else in the office likes music on. No. It's the out when we're in the office, like, oh, I really don't like this. And everyone's like, shut up, Angeli. We're listening. <laughs> oh. Like, oh. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know how people can do it. It just totally, well, it doesn't totally break my focus, but it's just, it definitely doesn't help. Um, yeah. Like, I definitely do better without it. So. I think because people say that if you listen to music without lyrics, like classical music and stuff, then that's not as bad. Yeah. Which I think is true to an extent, but it still isn't as productive as if I just didn't have it. So. Yeah. I think even with like classical music, once you get used to it, you're then like listening out for that sort of. Yeah. yeah exactly. You want to hear. And then you're like, oh, bum. I haven't done anything. I'm not working. I'm doing something else. Yeah. I am exactly the same. Yeah. yeah, I'm the one that has to put up with it at work. They should supply you with noise cancelling headphones. I know. I was thinking, can I get headphones that just like, just cancel, like, 
don't play anything in my ears, but still cancel everything around me. Yeah, they do. That, that does exist. It's a thing. Um, mm. My friend's got some. Uh, he sleeps at night with them. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, they just kind of like block everything out, apparently. Oh, maybe I will invest in those. Yeah. The times, if Nick, if he's watching, plays his drum and bass. No. <laughs> It's looking pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah, sure you have mind. You'll have to trust me until I actually post photos of it. There is nice, very nice. Yeah, I might put just a little bit of yellow, just a splash on some of the like the most, the highest points. Right. She says now thinking, oh now I ruin it. One thing that I do need to get like way better at is blending. That's when you just kind of like you have a gradient of colour. Yeah. Kind of yeah, I tried to big so lines of it yeah you kind of just start with like lines and smooth it together i was trying that with the video secrets and it went okay ish so yeah sometimes i could do it and i'm like okay i'm happy with that and other times it's like well that's just like blocks of weird line colors so that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah i imagine i'd be the same if i did it more often Yeah, I did yeah, just a little bit of yellow. I think that looks all right. Magnificent. Yeah. Flames. Pew, pew. I was thinking I was going to do something fancy with the feathers of the Phoenix, but I'm just like, nah. nah I think that looks good. Mm -hmm. Charge. Now this is dry popping, we go back to this. I think I might just leave that before I go. Yeah, I'm going to do nice stuff to it. Now. <laughs> just a little hint of. And Stormy, if you're still watching, make sure that you tag us so that we can see your vampire eyes that you've been working on during yes. the stream. Got lots of blood vampires, blood knights. Vampire night, I said, it's uh, one of the coolest signs. Yeah, I really like the vampires. I was like, oh, you have my attention now. Thank you. <sighs> I shall be buying all of those things. Yeah, I've got a bunch, like a list of basically just all the vampire models I can yeah. buy and have them around yet. Yeah. Yeah, I've got most of them. I'd like the second, I'd like to get the the vampire centaur again. Because I've made one. Right. Which was the female presenting one. So now I want the male presenting one. Oh, look, the camera's finally focused on it. <laughs> Didn't move anything. Oh, but that's those two done. 
So yeah, OSL takes yeah a little bit of time to do. Uh, you have to practice it and practice it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Once 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 you do get the hang of it, you can do some really cool stuff with magic and fire and all sorts. I've seen some really amazing stuff online that people have done with it. Blue is still definitely a colour that I need to work on. The flaming one looks really good, but the blue needs some work. How are you doing? Yeah, I think I'm pretty much there. Uh, as in, I don't think it's going to get any better at the moment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably happy. I will let uh, let the internet be the judge when I post <laughs> Uh, pictures of it but but yeah um i can see the idea behind it so yes um and it's definitely pretty cool and i will definitely be trying it again uh on something else so yeah excellent yeah and that's all it takes is just practicing like every right. opportunity you get to do a little bit of it somewhere mm -hmm. take it right and, yeah just gotta be brave enough to do it yes exactly and yeah do you like use the camera trick as well and like yeah, that's clever. That's a good idea. Yeah. What I normally do is just make sure the room's pretty dark and then just have like a bright light. Right. That's shining the way that I want the, the light to go on the model. Uh -huh. Then I just take a picture, turn it to black and white, and you can see uh -huh. all the bits that should be a bright color versus all the bits that should be the normal color or dark. Awesome. Yeah. That's Angelie's trick for the day. <laughs> Right, well then, seeing as we are pretty much done and it's half past five, so that's worked well. Thanks, so. Yeah, well done us. And I, I look forward to seeing your painted finished stuff. Yep. Um, for everyone watching, thank you very much for coming along. I will again just put these uh, links in the chat. Uh, so I was trying to see the chat over our camera. So... First link there is uh, for Fantasy Flight Games Descent Legends of the Dark, which is the game that we these minis have come from. Uh, just come out in the US and now in the UK as well, so you should be able to get it from your friendly local gaming shops and online. Uh, looks awesome. The miniatures look awesome. Uh, you can also, at that website, download Robbie's short stories about uh, the various characters from the games. And if you haven't seen the books that we have they are a link there will take you to the aconite books shop and the um world section for descent we have uh, three books so uh, robbie did our first book the doom of fallowhearth uh necromancers and magic Ooh, this was my uh phone background for a very long time sadly sadie has taken over from that now so <laughs> That's understandable. I can allow that. And then the Shield of Decan by David, who was here earlier and had to go and make tea for cats. Um, and finally, the Gates of Thelgrim, which comes out in October. Yay! And the new one, obviously, I don't have a cover for it because it's just been announced. Um, Zachareth, uh, which is out spring next year. Yay! March, I want to say. Is it March? As long as I keep writing. Yep. Stay motivated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming along and hanging out with us. Um, it's been very nice to have you here. And it's uh, been good fun. So yeah. until next time, which is in two weeks' time, when we were looking at fur, hair, and skin. Um, so until then, uh, see you later. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.